otolaryngology lecture. Anatomy of the ear. So the outer ear consists of the auricle, auditory canal, and the pina. The middle ear consists of the tympanic cavity, which includes the incus, malus, and stapes. The inner ear is called the labyrinth and the organ of cordae, also called the cochlea. So here is a picture of the anatomy of the ear. So you have the ear lobe and the pina, which is the very top. You then have the external auditory canal, which then goes into the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane is also called the eardrum. There are three main bones in the middle ear. There is the malus, inches, and stapes. And then this moves into the inner ear, which consists of the semicircular canals, the vestibule, and the co cochlea. The semicircular canals are positioned at right angles, as you can see here. The semicircular canals are responsible for our balance. Disorders of the ear and hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss is caused by a problem that originates in the external or middle ear. It prevents sound vibrations from passing through external, external auditory canals and limits the vibrations of tympanic membrane or it interferes with the passage of bone conduction sound in the middle ear. A sensorial hearing loss results from an abnormality in the organ of cordae or of the auditory nerve. Treated with hearing aids and surgical implantation of the artificial cochlea. So here is a picture of hearing loss, so conduction deafness of the outer ear, which can be from an occlusion of the ear canal, which is commonly known as cerumen blockage. We can also have a rupture of the eardrum if there is an increase in pressure or an object that obstructs the eardrum. We can also have otosclerosis, where there is a narrowing in the bones in the inner ear. Sensorial or nerve deafness is, can be caused by a labyrinthitis, which is caused by either a viral or autoimmune infection. There can also be a toxic injury of the labyrinth. Meniere's disease can also cause nerve deafness. A tumor or multiple sclerosis can it affect the optic nerve or the auditory nerve to the brain. Meningitis and also basal skull fractures can affect and cause nerve deafness. There are two types of otitis. The first one is otitis externa, which is swimmer's ear, and is caused by a dermatological condition, trauma, continuous use of earplugs or earphones, or swimming. Oftentimes, this is caused by swimming and can be avoided by using a swim cap or using earplugs or cotton balls that are lined with Vaseline. What happens is water collects and mixes with cerumen to form the ideal breeding ground for bacteria and fungus. Otitis media is in the inner ear, or not in the inner ear, in the middle ear, and can be either serous or suppurative, and often associated with upper respiratory tract infections or allergic reactions. These are commonly more common in children. So as you can see here, externa, otitis externa often affects the outer ear and into the canal. Otitis media oftentimes builds up fluid in the middle ear behind the tympanic membrane which can cause bulging, hyperemia, or perforation, 
if that fluid is not relieved. Otitis interna can cause vertigo and hearing loss. And the reason why we say that patients with strep throat or other nasopharyngeal inflammations can develop otitis media is that there is a passageway right into the middle ear from the pharynx. So here is a picture of a tympanostomy or tubes in the ears. You can see the white plug here and sometimes these will be color blue. Impacted cerumen. Cerumen is a soft yellowish waxy substance that lubricates the external auditory canal. Excessive excretion can cause hearing loss, tinnitus, or ringing of the ears, feeling of fullness, or autoalgia, which is also ear pain. Impacted cerumen can cause conductive hearing loss. Meniere's disease causes swelling and edema in the semicircular canals which affect our balance. Triggers episodes of reoccurring attacks of vertigo, tinnitus, a sensation of pressure in the affected ear, and advancing hearing loss. Meniere's disease is treated during active periods with medications for nausea and vomiting, a salt-restricted diet, diuretics, Antihistamines may be prescribed to control the edema in the labyrinth. 